Wormlet. Black, I've been waiting to be in a deck for so long. Why have you forgotten about me? You didn't forget about me, did you, Black? No, Wormlet. No, I never forget about you. Your beautiful lizard worm thing. How can I forget about all that life gain you give us and all those counters you get? I'd never do that. No. Good, Blake. I'm ready. This battle. Yes, guys, I, uh, I feel bad for the wormlet. It's been, uh, it's been waiting for its turn. It's been waiting in standard. And it says, Blake, I want to go into commander with you. Why haven't you done this? Why haven't you let me, why haven't you given me a chance? And I just don't know. I just haven't, I just haven't gotten around to it. But the thing about it is that I uh, mentioned in a prior video that I wanted to build a budget deck. And uh, where I mentioned that you could build a budget deck, specifically uh, with this Commander Maria. And uh, I, I got to thinking, I'd be like, God, I could probably, I could probably make a really sweet budget deck for Maria. And um, let's just start pulling out some cards. And I, I think I did about 50 minutes of footage, maybe over an hour. And I was like, you know, I can't really use that video. It'd be too long, It'd be too long to share, you know? So I wanted to, but I had all the cards and I was like, this is really great. And uh, so I just put it all together and um, I'm gonna kind of explain to you what this deck is. Um, for instance, it, it does cost less than $100. So that's, I mean, that's great. It's like $97. And uh, additionally, I think it kind of represented kind of where I first started with Maria. Kind of like a gruel stompy list with just really good green creatures. And I really love it. And I put uh, some new touches on it. I think you'll very, I think you'll enjoy it very much. It's, I think it's really well put together. And in fact, I can't wait to take this for a spin. Uh, and I always say that about these decks, but this is the one where I'm like, I built it and I'm like, let's go to the LGS. Because I feel like this would just be fun. A fun, casual deck where it's going to be playing pretty nice. And I could just play it for for days, you know? And not be sad, not be worried, like, about, you know, putting playing decks that might be too high, you know, more high-powered or, you know, maybe won't fit for that particular meta. I just wanted to kind of make a contrast here. And um, these are kind of some of the cards that were just high-value cards. These are in my other Maria deck. And they're just, they just, like, two of these cards, you know, Put together and then you're basically at a hundred dollar you know criteria right you have like urza saga stomping ground boseju these three here are just going to go over a hundred bucks just these three lands and um you know even like a prismatic vista i just pulled some cards out just to be like i mean this card here is like 80 90 dollars on mox opal you know they're just fantastic cards what can you say but um going through these really good cards um i did notice that like Maybe I could improve my deck building. And I think I would challenge you all to do that as well. Maybe um, you have a commander that you really enjoy. And maybe you started off like maybe in a simpler kind of game plan. Um, and then you kind of graduate into more expensive and high powered cards. Maybe more combo orientated cards or game plans. But um, going back to this, it's like, man, this card is, this, this deck is gas. And these cards are cheap. These cards are so freaking cheap, it's it's crazy. So, I mean, most of the cards here are like less than 50 cents a piece. And then what I did is I got like maybe three or four cards that were like $8 value range, just to kind of glue the glue the deck together. But we have like amazing cards, like a Teething Wormlet, right? Now this guy's just gonna be able to scale up as the game goes on. He's gonna gain us life for each of the artifacts that come into play. He's gonna be able to hold a lot of the equipments that we want. and you know, start, um, you know, dealing damage to our opponents. So I really enjoyed the Wormlet. I, I think it has a fine, fine spot. Additionally, we're going to have some just mega bombs in here, some just crazy creatures in here that, you know, are going to really kind of like do the business. So we'll get into like kind of the mega bombs here um, eventually, but let's just kind of go over the um, kind of structure of the deck here. And uh, let me just get some of these out first. Yep, I kind of have these segmented into like different types of... Uh, chapters here so for instance we have like a lava spur boots this is our protection suite but that also grants haste as well so like a lava and keep in mind with maria our commander sorry if i didn't explain this one she'll be able to tap when she's on the battlefield she'll be able to tap these as like if they're as if they were lands all these uh, non-token artifacts so all these artifact permanent cards that we cast 
and they stick to the battlefield. Um, with Mary on the battlefield, we can just start using them like basically as lands. She can also take two artifacts like this. You can tap those and actually use those to exile the top card of your library. Then you may play it that turn and like uh, when you term it impulse draw. So she has that ability too. So she can keep your gas going. She's a card value uh, engine as well. So she's amazing. Just three mana, very simple, you know, mana dork, turn one, turn two, marry, uh, start doing the business. Okay, so we got some protection here. Lava Spur Boots, Swift Food Boots. I'm gonna skip out on the Lightning Greaves, just more in general, maybe even in general, just, even though it is like a $5 card, but that doesn't, that wasn't the reason why, but we're gonna have a ton of equipments and haste, like a free equip to like have haste and hexproof is, or shroud is good, but we're gonna have a lot of equipments in this deck, so. These are kind of our protection, kind of hasty things right here. Then we have um, just going into like our, our artifact creatures that we have in here that um, you know will either grant grant us value um, or just basically um, you know add as like kind of tech cards. So we have a solemn simulacrum which will actually give us a little land ramp there. Tap that down for mana as well, and if it dies, we get a card out of it, which is cool. Then we have a card like a Patchwork Automaton. This is just another card that's gonna scale up. We're gonna be casting artifacts each time we do so. We're gonna put a 1-1 one -one counter on the Patchwork and it has War 2, so that's a nice little protection part. We have the Hope of Gear Report to kind of act as like one of those sneaky counter spells. You know what's interesting about the Hope of Gear Report? Like putting like a Blade of Cells on it and like basically locking your opponents out from casting non-creature spells like for the rest of the game or at least two of the opponents if it does connect. That's kind of an interesting concept that I was thinking of. But yeah, Hope of Gear Report connects and then you have the option that you may sacrifice it after combat if it did connect with an opponent and that opponent would not be able to cast non-creature spells the next turn. Very interesting card. Uh, then we have a Haywire Might. So this is the one where you can just take out really problematic enchantments or artifacts that are, you know, maybe, and that's just really sneaky tech, right? Just very easy just to cast this um, with Maria. And if, even if you're tapped out on lands, you just use Maria's ability to tap this down and it sacrifices itself by paying it uh, into the green. And there you go. You've exiled a nasty artifact or enchantment. Bomat Courier, just one of those other amazing cards that's, in our opening hand, it's gonna just draw so many cards. It's gonna hit opponents a couple times that are open, and then we're gonna be able to discard our hand and um, accrue, accrue those cards that are uh, exiled underneath it. Okay, we have the rabbit battery here. Another really nice hasty artifact. Um, and what's really nice about the equip is it gives a plus one, plus one too, so that's nice. Then we have the ornithopter. OG ornithopter here, just like one of those things that Maria loves. She loves these like, zero mana artifacts is basically like free ramp. You know, and the fact that Ornithopter can grab like a Beamtown beat stick or a prying blade and start hitting in the air with it, just another nice effect. Again, the Phyrexian Walker just having a nice booty, a zero three that could also get in there with some of those equipments too, or just that's his mana. And then another like little techie card here, like a Tormod's Crypt for those really nasty graveyards, right? Maybe someone has a really juicy graveyard and just be like, see ya. No more graveyard for you. Okay. So this is kind of like our money pile, I'd say, this next one. And uh, we shall see why. Okay, so basically we have the lizard blades here. Let me just move these down here. All right, so there you go. All right, so um, there is the lizard blade. And this is what I call like the double strike crew. So we have both the Lizard Blades and the Phyrexian Dragon Engine. So not only can these like act as mana production if we need them to, or impulse draw, which might happen sometimes, but also they have this amazing um, ability of double strike. Both of them have double strike. And um, what's really cool about Lizard Blades too is you can equip it onto things too and give them double strike. So very interesting card, but really, really the, really the, um, really juice about this these two is that we need to think about like what equipments are these going to do well with so like a beam town beat stick we equip it to our lizard blades lizard blades gets in and now we're making two treasures each time the lizard blade connects or one treasure each so two total right this one also gives menace so there's a little more evasion prime blades similarly this is all combat damage to a player so lizard blades or bikes and dragon engine deals combat damage then you get a crew a crew a treasure Equip cost two on that one, but only mana cost one. Additionally, the Mask of Memory. So that's just like another 
crazy combat damage card. We equip this to one of our double strikers, and then all of a sudden we're drawing four cards and discarding two. It's just netting in a bunch of cards. Additionally, it just it taps for mana too. I mean, I love this commander so much, guys. It's like it's like playing like a landfall com commander without like a lot of the toxicity. Like, I feel like you, you actually have to do game actions. You know, it's not like I'm spewing lands out. I'm actually like having to like you know tap these down. I'm getting to make game actions and you know having a fun time with these cards. So here's the uh, gold vine pick. So that's another super cool one there. So um, that was also just a two man artifact with equip one. And so we're gonna go ahead and equip it to the uh, lizard blades or whatever, and our double striker. And then once again, um, similar to the prion blade, we, we accrue those treasures uh, each time we deal combat damage. Okay, so there's that. What's nice about these is it gives a little bit of buff too. So you'll notice that as well. Makes it a little harder to block the creature, right? Here's Umazawa's Jite. Now this is like one of those $8 artifacts, so we're kind of splurging on our budget a little bit. But this is just another really good card, like, and I finally get to play it in a deck. I've been waiting to play this, and I'm like, let's put it in this crazy budget deck I'm building. So here's Umazawa's Jite. Whenever a equipped creature deals gamut damage, put two charge counters on Umazawa's Jite. Remove a charge counter from Umazawa's Jite. Choose one. A equipped creature gets two, two. Ah, it's so nasty. So like if you put this on a Lizard Blades and it connects, you can just make that Lizard Blades like a 5-5 five, five all of a sudden. And then when it swings in again, it does like five damage. It's insane. Or you can just start like hitting like creatures. You can hit opponent's creatures. It's like removal. Wow, so sick. And this is like one of my, definitely one of my favorite swords. And it's only like eight bucks. Both of these are like eight bucks. Umazawa's GTA and the Sword of Forge and Frontier. So uh, Sword of Forge and Frontier, also a quip creature gets 2-2 and has protection from red and green. So you get a little protection there and a 2-2 buff. And then whenever a quip creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top two cards of your library, you may play those cards this turn to play an additional land this turn. It doesn't... It doesn't happen very often, but when you do get this onto like a Phyrexian Dragon or a Lizard Blade and you start connecting with it, the opponent doesn't last very much longer because basically you're like exiling four cards at a time from the top of your deck and then you can play two additional lands. So the value is like extraordinary. So what an amazing card. And that's kind of the double striking crew. So I have a good base here. We have like a lot of low mana creatures um, that are artifacts and then we have the double strike crew. And now um, we're gonna get into the um, the bad the bad big baddies. Okay, so this is um, another nice one, like a seven seven um, for four colorless. Really, what we'll be utilizing Traxos though for is to like kind of turn on some of our other stuff. So um, additionally, also with Marion, it's kind of a good combo. Like if we can we can basically continue to use this for mana. Um, we play like tap it for mana, play an artifact, untap it. It kind of nets us a little bit of mana, which is also very nice. Um, additionally, it also turns on like cards like our Garrix Uprising. So that's nice where it, if we have it on the battlefield and we put Garrix Uprising, we reach the criteria for the four power, we draw a card, and then, um, or whenever a power four or greater enters the battlefield under, uh, under your control, it's a creature, draw a card. So that's very nice. Also here we have the Skullport Nexus, so that one's uh, just an exceptional. This guy's I think is like more like the sleeper of the year. Uh, I've been farmed so many times on this on the Arena Client that it's just like, it should be even maybe more of like a standard card because this thing with flyers is very good. <laughs> it's so good. And I, I, I feel like maybe people haven't utilized this yet. Um, it's like basically like a great henge for like $7.00. You know, you have like a X less to cost spell um, based on the power of your creatures. And then um, also when that whenever our creatures dies, based on that power, you create a fungus dinosaur creature based on its power. If all your creatures die, you make like a single dinosaur that based on all those powers. It could be like a 30-30, who knows? And then for that two and a tap, that's it. It's so cheap. Double target creature's power until end of turn. What? This thing just kills you like... Imagine like a Galta or uh, just like a, an angel flyer, like in, in like plain Selesnia colors. This card is just whacked out. I would probably, I might go on the net and probably go on like TCG player and maybe buy, like start buying these up in nice art because I feel, I, I believe, 
I believe, guys. All right, so here's the Panharmonicon. And this one is a, this one is a little more on the pricier side, kind of like the Skullporn Nexus, but not so bad. Maybe six, seven bucks, not bad. But it really is going to glue together all our like big creatures, right? It's going to really pay us off. Um, it's going to double all our um, triggered abilities. Um, if a permanent, <clears throat> if an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes triggered ability of a permanent you controlled to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So, um, yeah. So we're going to have some enter the battlefield triggers for our Panharmonicon, and it's going to be it's going to be absolutely wonderful. So let's uh, check it out. Let's see. We'll just skip these ones real quick. We'll get back to those. Okay. So here we go. So like for instance, like a Vorinclex, um enters the battlefield with a Panharmonicon. We'll go ahead and fetch up four for us instead of two. Fantastic. And then, of, of course, Vorinclex has that chapter eight there where you pay into eight and then <clears throat> you um, flip it over here. We will go over this because it's very important. So we pay eight and then we'll really the first chapter is kind of it's just like the, the juice, right? Where you're going to mill 10 cards, put up to two creature cards from among the mill cards onto the battlefield. Whew. Dang, brother. So you're not only milling and getting value into your graveyard, you're those, those, uh, that basically a slot machine, like for instance, we're gonna, you know, hit an Avenger of Zendikar and end raiders forerunners, and then we're just good to go, right? So, there's some nice enter the battlefield triggers. Avenger of Zendikar is one of those really nice enter the battlefield triggers where it just creates a bunch of O1s based on the number of lands we control. So, just imagine doubling all these end raiders forerunners similarly, just doubling all these enter the battlefield triggers. You know, that, that overrun effect, obviously, not a crater hoof. That's the thing. We were playing budget. I mean, it's fine though. We're going to be fine. And raise four runners are going to do the job. Rough triplets, just another one of those amazing cards that you know, we just needs to find a home. And I think this is the home. And uh, Panharmonicon seems to be. Let's make a whole bunch of these things and make a bunch of these grip, rough triplet tokens and uh, really, really become a threat. Here's Cogla. Ooh, ooh, Cogla. That's got to be like a key card. And I decided to bring two. <laughs> Where's the other one? Kagla. Did I already skip the other one? Oh, well, I have two. I have both of them in here. I was going to be like, surprise. <laughs> yeah. So we have both of the Kaglas in here. We have the Kagla Yudaro and the Kagla the Titan Ape. This one's a really, this one's a little more interesting because when this attacks, it starts destroying artifacts and enchantments. So that's insane. Um, but both of them are similar in that when they enter the battlefield, they fight target creature that we don't control. And usually it always is a one-sided uh, conflict because this thing's only six mana and usually the creatures don't have that much power and toughness. Like if we're like kind of, you know, ramping up, it's very a uh, one-sided battle for that. So there's Kogla. And now we have Roxanne too. So Roxanne is another fun and like Panharmonicon effect where, you know, we're doubling those meteorites. We're gonna be starting ramping with Roxanne. It's gonna be awesome. So I really enjoy like just that kind of effect that Roxanne has already. Um, but just like doubling those up with the power monocon sounds really good. And then also when it attacks, it starts creating more meteorites and more removal for us, more ramp. So we love it. Additionally, Tovalar's Huntmaster. This one just goes ahead and creates a bunch of 2-2 Green Wolf creature tokens. Uh, two twos when two two twos when it comes on the battlefield. It also has this night bound side that if it does go to night. Uh, this thing, when it attacks, it will create two twos as well. Um, not only when it enters, but when it attacks. So there's that. Here's one I wanted to try. Just kind of sitting there in my barn, and it's like, let's go. I mean, you're playing a lot of big baddies. Like, I'm ready. So I'm like, okay, let's go with the Harg. So this one is the one where if you attack, you may put a creature card. Kind of like a sneak attack, right? And then that creature returns to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. So you can just go ahead and attack with this big 6-6, six, six, put down a creature card, get maybe benefit from some of that enter the battlefield triggers or maybe some damage, whatever it does. And then um, you can put it, if it dies, you can put it through to the top from your library. So it's kind of like resurrects itself. Defiler of Vigor, what a nasty five mana card. This kind of like also ramps you up as well, which is also really amazing because you can start paying two life for a single green mana on your green spells. 
with this, you can start playing the one Phyrexian mana instead of paying the green. And additionally, whenever you cast a green permanent spell, put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. It's crazy, bro. And it has Trample. What a nasty guy. So there is that kind of addition. So um, this is the one I wanted to talk about here. And I don't know if I mentioned Tyrant's Familiar either. So um, Tyrant's Familiar, this is one of my favorite cards that I didn't know about. Someone was playing at the LGS and it really was amazing. And I was like, wow, that card is really good. Like just comes down and like takes out your continuously if you own if you have your commander on the battlefield just like does seven damage to it to a creature you know that could like take out most commanders it has flying and haste so as long as we have mary out which we usually do this guy's just gonna like come down and take out a commander and do seven damage in the air so <laughs> it's crazy i love that card now doors of durin is also one of the one of those special cards that's only like 70 cents but this has been played in so many good formats like i know i know um there was a, a YouTuber that was playing this. He got to like rank number one in the alchemy standard not so long ago playing a Doors of Durin deck. So I think his name is Alf. And Alf was killing it with the Doors of Durin. So there you go. An amazing card. And a lot of people speculated on this card because it's just that good. And what does it do? So you have this on the battlefield. And then you attack with any creature. You get to look at the top two cards of your library and um, basically leave the one on top. You can reveal it. And if it's a creature card, it's tapped and attacking. It comes on the battlefield, has an enter battlefield trigger, and it's tapped and attacking. It's kind of amazing. So you can really cheat out some of these bigger creatures and really get a lot of value. Additionally, like, why not have, like, a Blade of Selves? If we're going to have all these really nasty creatures, <laughs> why not just uh, put a Blade of Selves and, you know, put it on put it on one of these Avengers of Syndicar or, you know, what else would be fun? And, like, an Enraised Forerunner. <laughs> That would be fine. That would be great. And we'll have all those triggers go off. It'll be wonderful. So uh, I love it, guys. I'm so excited. And this is all under $100. This deck is under 100 bucks. So so who, who says you need to, like, break the bank to play this game? You really don't. Um, and I'm, I think I'm going to get into the budget stuff because it really, like, kind of opened me up to, like, the possibilities of this commander. Maybe I been kind of taking some liberties with some cards and maybe I should kind of revisit some cards and make sure I'm, you know, getting the most value out of my decks. So like a Howling Mine, just tap this down with Maria. We're the only one that could be benefiting from the extra card. We can tap it for mana. All these cards are amazing. This one's a different one that I wanted to try. Probably another hidden gem from Lord of the Rings where we can accrue um, to look into our library about five cards deep um, when we attack a, a player with two or more creatures. So we can attack multiple opponents, have multiple triggers for this, and hopefully find some more gas. So that's the point of that. Then we have the new card from the Outlaws of Thunder Junction, a really good set, really strong, right? And uh, this one's amazing. This one really stood out where you can start accruing cards based on uh, creatures with four power that enter the battlefield. So this is like our value creatures, Oron Frostfang. With Oron Frostfang and Trample, that's an interesting... Um, like uh, interaction if you have death touch. So for instance, if like uh, our Defiler Vigor has death touch, it just has to do the one damage and it tramples over with the rest. Ooh, it's really brutal, guys. So, I mean, it doesn't have to absorb all that toughness. It just basically touches the, does the one damage, the creature's dead. Even it doesn't have first strike and the trample, it just tramples the rest of the damage over. So this card is really nasty. And we draw a card too, based on those um, the damage we do. This is only like, God, I think it's only like a dollar fifty. Used to be like a twenty-five dollar card. Bramble Familiar. This one is a really good mana sink. Like if we're, you know, doing well and we're like, you know, ready to like invest some mana, like in maybe turn four or five, we can go ahead and um, drop that sorcery, mill seven cards, and put a creature enchantment or land card from among the mill cards on the battlefield. Hopefully, get like maybe a Kogla or one of our other really nasty creatures, and uh, yeah, go from there. Or it can be a mana dork. Whatever we wanted to do. <laughs> Then we have Beast Whisper to accrue some cards. Just another MVP. Just cast a creature card. Cast a cast a creature spell. Draw a card. Springleaf Drum. This is there for mana fixing because our mana base is not the best. I mean, we're playing like 11, 11 basics for each. 
so for us the mountain so uh yeah so we're gonna need a drum to like kind of sometimes tap a creature for red mana in the beginning or green mana like so we can keep some other hands you know that we might not be able to keep otherwise so definitely a good mana fixer um, otherwise not really my favorite card for maria because maria already taps these down for mana de facto but um so it kind of be redundant to tap a creature but it does tap for any color so that's good to know soul ring of course because it just does well with all our artifacts just tapping for two colorless felwar stone our arcane signet just those nice little two mana plays that will help us like kind of fix our mana and maybe it ramp us and of course ramp us dousing daggers is some nice equipment that we can flip this over deal combat damage to an opponent and then go ahead and make our rainbow land what amazing card we're doing big mana stuff so it just fits in so well sweet okay and now we have our nice little ramp package here with this all our L's. We're not playing Ragavan in this deck, obviously. So we know we got a little bit creative with our um, single mana effects like Springleaf Drum, Soul Ring, of course, our Signets. And then we have our little four mana, four mana elves here, or <laughs> our four one mana turn elves. This one's fun too, Arbor Elf on untapped tar target forest. So this kind of gives us more uh, redundancy. We have the Lanwar Elf, Fenhor Elf, these all tap for one green. Tangle Floor Hedron can be a land or some ramp spell, so it's just a nice one for us. Beast Within for some nice removal. You just remove any, any permanent. Return to the Wild Speaker for some nice card draw. Additionally, we have Garrick's Primal Hunt, Hunter, and more like basically the same thing as the Return to the Wild Speaker. You minus the three from its loyalty, basically it just comes down, and then you draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures control, so we can just draw tons of cards. Riskar's Expertise similarly does that, and then we can cast a five mana spell for free upon um, casting the spell. Then we have some nice removal with Vandal Blast. We can overload that to destroy all our opponent's artifacts. Blasphemous Act to basically wipe the board clean. We might have to do that if someone is doing some very scary things, and it happens sometimes. So we might have to do a lot of damage and do it quickly, so we can just kind of restart and kind of re we get um, our things going. And Mary is a good card engine. You know, Howling Mine is there. You know, we have those things that kind of generate a lot of value. So I'm not very scared. You know, I'm not, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. And then we have our land suite. We have a couple fetch lands in here, have a couple duels. Um, you know, some of these are a little more sus, but we're playing such a budgety deck. Like we might have these two basic lands available. So Cinder Glade might look really good here. Copperline Gorge. This is our most expansive land, I think, is a Crag Crown Pathway. It's like, you know, it's like uh, six or seven bucks, but it's not so bad. Then Evolving Wilds is some of these fetch lands. These are just easy fetches. Exotic Orchard. These are the ones that you can tap any color your opponents create. So that's nice. Forest. We have listed abundance of like these full out forests in here. Just threw them all together. Just ready to rock. Game Trail, that's a nice duel where we just, it's like a snarl. You just reveal a forest or a mountain from your hand and it comes on the battlefield. The Pain Land, Carpusen Forest, just no, just no real penalty, just one damage if we want to create red or green. No biggie, it comes in untapped, it's perfect. Or it creates colors for free. Then we have like about 10, 10 or 11 mountains, very evened out. We have this nice little man land in here that comes in tapped. So, you know, I said, well, instead of playing like maybe another fetch like that comes in tapped let's just play a man land and, and we'll have gruel land and it can maybe suit up and start doing some damage so let's go then there's a river tears outlook these are the both of the cabaret courtyard and a river tears outlook they'll both fetch mountains and forests rock fell down that's a slow land it'll come in on tapped if we have three or more lands on the battlefield or two or more other lands thank you and then uh rootbound crag this battlefield tap unless you control a mountain or a forest. Spire Industry. This is a beautiful one where if we control any any artifacts, we can basically act as like a Carplusen forest and pay one life and add one money to any, any one mana color to our mana pool. And then we have to control an artifact to do that. So that's a nice, nice techie one for you guys in the Terramorph Expanse. So there's it. So that's it. And this is that. Guys, it's ready. The wormlet. The wormlet is 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 so ready, guys. It's so ready for its uh, turn. Oh, there's Kogla. Oh, it's because it was like these, uh, sorry guys, because these were like the four in my picture. So, oh my God, look at these crazy guys here. These are insane, that's why I put them on the thumbnail. Tarastodon, oh my God. 
this thing is so nasty, like with a panharmonicon too, just like take out, you could probably take out like someone's, all their lands. It'd be awful. It'd be disgusting. Let's do it. And then like a titan of industry, look at all that life you gain, all those enchantments you can destroy. Oh my goodness. Kogla Yadaro, just to attack, just to, just to fight, fight anything. And then you can go ahead and if you wanted, you can even pitch it from your hand to the graveyard to destroy an enchantment or an artifact. And then it cycles and you draw. It's great. Thunderfoot Balath. Look at this crazy guy. So we control our commander and the LR creatures get 2-2 and trample. What? Anyways, so this is what we're working with here. And there it is. I was hoping to find our lady here. There she is. She's our general. She's like hanging out with the wormlet now. It's like about time. About time you're hanging out with me. Well, thanks for uh, hanging out with me today, guys, if you did. I'm just chilling. Summer vacation. I'm, I'm having a great time. And this is the deck. So you know, I'll just kind of just make this more manageable. There's our commander, Mary the Scholar. Gruel colors, red, green. Then this is just all the goodies. All the goodies that you will find. And it, I, I can't believe it. It stayed under $97. It seems really solid. It seems very fundamental. Like, I have some nice removal, like the Bla Beast Within, Vandal Blast, Blasphemous Act. I didn't get greedy at all. I, I really, like, was able to, like, find some really cool, cool cards here that kind of looks like they're going to be working very well together. I'm very excited for the Skullpore Nexus. Very excited for that card. I'm excited for all these creatures working together, kind of doing nasty overrun things. It seems very like appropriately priced here with all these nice single mana artifacts. They all kind of serve a purpose with our double strike crew. There's some nice hasty artifacts, some good tech artifacts on the low end, some ones that scale up. And then there's this nice little mana base just, just hoping to get there, you know? And I think that spring leaf drum is actually gonna do a lot. I think it will do a lot for us. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I can't wait to do more budget decks. This was so fun. So have a great day, goodbye.